Welcome back. You're watching The Big Story and we are taking a look at critical issues affecting Nairobi City. And I just want to start with that all-important matter of runaway security in the county. Other than what we saw happen to Mr. Moriuki eight days ago, I mean, we have seen Nairobians suffer under the hands of criminals in broad daylight. And I want to engage you, uh, Mr. Peter Emwatok, who is the uh, minority leader in the Nairobi County Assembly, I mean, Nairobians don't even know who should be, uh, you know, in charge. Who, where does the back stop? Who should keep Nairobians safe when we're seeing people attacking them in broad daylight? And what is being done to make Nairobi safer again? First of all, I must say, uh, we are very sorry as the leaders of Nairobi for what's going on in Nairobi. In particular, the use of our young men to commit such a crimes in a broad daylight. I remember last time we had a debate before the county assembly on the issue of the, of the member of Yala, and some of us were threatened before they speak on, allowed, on, on phones. And so unfortunate now it's happening to the chair, the former chair of the CBD. I want to place this categorical squarely to the governor of the city. And what I've always spoken about, we cannot pack the back, pass the back on a daily basis. The only times I listen to our governor speaks about the predecessor blackmail cartel. And what he has just said on the interview, I've said, I'm looking at a situation whereby no one is taking responsibility for these counties if that are taking place. Mm -hmm. If I look at the governor speaking about the insecurity of the county, that there are functions which are delegated to the national government, I, I think primarily to set up policies before the county assembly. As a member of the county assembly, for those years that I've been, I'm a second term MCA. Since Governor Sonko came into office, he has never brought any bill before this assembly to mitigate issues that you're addressing here currently. Look at the situation when it comes to the issue. He's speaking about the budget. Look at the budget. I can tell the Kenyans and Arabians at large, being in that county assembly, the current budget for 2017-2018 was assented by Governor Sonko himself, not Governor Kidero. Sometimes I ask myself a question. Did Governor Sonko campaign to look for an excuse to arrest Kidero? If so, he should just place before the police and say these are the issues I'm arresting Kidero on. Because every now and then, the question is being asked, the back has to be passed. My predecessor did this. My predecessor did this. When you ask a question, is we are saying the system in here was a dead system. How? Which are these systems which are dead? So what I want to place before the county tonight is very clear. The current budget for 2017-2018, as was brought before the assembly on before 30th of June 2017, was 35 billion. About two months ago. Governor Sonko brought a supplementary budget before the assembly, which we approved, of 33.7 billion. In this 33.7 billion, unfortunately, the development agenda of the county was reduced from 11.7 billion to 7.7 billion. When we talk about the county has challenges in terms of development, in terms of putting up policies, there's a problem. But you see... Right. Right. And I want to bring in uh, Mr. Akech to just weigh in on this. And this is a subject that is really eliciting a lot of reactions from even our viewers <clears> because <throat> there has been that hate and conversation and concern really about the state of Nairobi, various issues. And Mr. Akech, what really stands out for you uh, in terms of Nairobi? There's all this uh, conversation about how it's losing its glory. Uh, what stands out for you? And are you satisfied with how the governor has this afternoon address the issues facing the county? Well, first I want to say thank you for inviting me and also for my brother who went through an unfortunate incident. Um, it was very, it was, it was uncalled for and I'm also very happy the statement by Mr. Sonko, the governor, in connection with that issue that uh, he had no any uh, role to play and I think that in itself is an indication of good leadership. Now, Nairobi is a place where it's very sensitive, as you know, controls almost 60% of the GDP. And uh, we all want to live in Nairobi, we all want to invest in Nairobi, and we all want to work in Nairobi. And I believe that is some of the um, ambition of the, uh, of the governor himself. However, we still have some uh, problems, such as planning, implementation of certain policies, uh, rural uh, migration that are coming to Nairobi, because by the time we left, 
we were almost four million people. Now Nairobi is going to about six million people, and definitely there are certain things that have got to be improved, they've got to be changed, the infrastructure, and so it cannot accommodate the same people we had four years ago because now the population is big. But I must also say that the enforcement is one of the areas that I think we should also uh, uh, look into because the compliance part of it also becomes a bit of a problem. You look at some of the people, some of the ordinary Wanaichi, they go and put their infrastructure or their kiosk on a road reserve. Now, you don't blame Sonko for that. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have the, uh, the flooding of the, of the, of the of Tyrus, for instance. Uh, again, you find some of them are being blocked uh, purposely or maybe other people doing it unknowingly. And as a result, then of course that makes Nairobi to be not what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. My main concern really is we all should stop the blame game. But it's also fair for the governor himself to also say he inherited a luggage which was so heavy. You're talking of the luggage of the corruption, which of course he's got the right to talk about. Mm -hmm. You're talking of the certain infrastructure which was not bad. He has the right to talk about it. But now the problem is, the issue is, we should all come together and see what we can do as the citizen of this city and give him the opportunity to acquire or to do, uh, to accomplish some of his own manifesto, some of his own seven pillars that he had mentioned. The gentleman has only been in power for the past six months, eight months. Honestly, you don't expect him to do overnight. Mm -hmm. Things take time. And like you said, if you have a baby now, you don't expect him to work the next day. Right. I think things must go gradually, and it needs the, um, the motivation of the employees, and I'm very happy the, uh, the employees are motivated now. I'm very happy that at least we're seeing certain things like that are being done in about four or five months that he's been in power. But I think it is the responsibility of all the Nairobians to work hand in hand with Sonko because he's got what we call an open door policy. You go in, you give him the ideas, and any leader who accepts that he needs help, that to me is a good leader. Right. And Mr. Morioki, Governor Sonko there, we had him saying that he's your friend. So I don't know, as your friend, if he has tried to help you out in the case and to see that the goons who attacked you are really brought under book. And also Mr. Akech talks about the unique pressures that, you know, Nairobi as a county faces, the population pressures, and everything that comes with it. Do you think then there's a special kind of management approach that then needs to be effected to manage this kind of complex situation that really Nairobi finds itself in. Thank you. Uh, we have never had a problem with governor. Uh, in fact, my shock was that the guys who came stopping my press conference said, you cannot tarnish the name of the governor, and yet they had not read what I was going to read. Uh, so that is where I'm confused, you know. Uh, on one hand, you're hearing this, and on the other hand, you're hearing this. But look, I have left that to the police to investigate and get to the bottom of it, right? Right. Now, on matters concerning Nairobi, I first of all want to back what uh, my elder brother, Joe, whom we worked very well when he was uh, the mayor, that uh, um, the approach of bashing the governor, and that was my view, my personal view, the approach of bashing the governor is not probably going to take us anywhere. The matters of Nairobi are much more complex than just having big headlines saying Nairobi stinks. In fact, you imagine a tourist coming from Spain, landing on Nairobi on a Sunday morning, and the first thing he sees is a newspaper saying Nairobi stinks, and he's an investor. What is he going to do? Mm -hmm. So he might even want to take back the, uh, the return flight in the next day. We've got issues of aging infrastructure, and by that I mean we are seeing roads, but there is also sewer, there is drainage, mm -hmm. there is a, a whole lot of water shortage. We have a water shortage of about 170,000, between 150,000 to 170,000 cubic meters a day, shortage. And I mean, we don't have that water. We have issues of environment, solid waste management. We have issues of traffic congestion. This town, you cannot move, you cannot go anywhere. In fact, the other day I was talking to a lawyer friend of mine who has to move between uh, this court and that court and this court. 
uh, similar doctor friend of mine who were together. He works between Get to the Hospital, Kenyatta, and Nairobi Hospital. Mm -hmm. It's hell. Then we have issues of uh, housing, and you have issues of poverty. Mm. What I am saying is that these issues are a bit too complex just to leave them to the governor. You've heard him say that uh, Kura, Kera, uh, Kenha have all roads. In fact, he was just talking about Kura. But uh -huh. it's Kura, Kenha, uh, and Kera, and then Nairobi County roads. And I do not think that budget, as he was talking about, 4.5 billion, 3.5 billion, is sufficient to even make the county roads. And therefore, some of these roads even need to be declassified back to Kura, Kera, and Kenha. Right. These issues need engagement. They need stakeholder engagement. Mm -hmm. They don't need bashing. Right. And as it is, the guy has not even employed his chief officers. He needs to get a, a stable staffing, professionals to help him. Because surely, the governor cannot be the one romping all over, repairing roads at night. That's not going to help us. Mm -hmm. What is going to help us is methodical thinking and action. And therefore, uh, where am I coming from? I'm coming from a point of we must work together. Right. I am echoing uh, Joe's uh, uh, remarks that we must work in concert. And there are many other institutions. Uh, you will remember where NCBDA used to engage the police because of security. We need to come back and engage the Kenya police so that we find out what went wrong where. As we speak, Sharon, there are some parts of this city which are completely ungovernable. And maybe the governor may, may know or not know this. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, down there, Kirinyaga Road. Even the county themselves do not collect revenue. Why? They can't touch it. And therefore, we must go back to the book drawing board and see how to solve such problems. Engage the people on the ground. Find out, are they willing to pay? Yes, they are willing to pay. What help do you need? We need security. Back in Gekomba, there, that is also another hell of a place of lawlessness. Those business people are doing business in a background where the county is not collecting revenue and therefore cannot also provide sufficient services. There right. are things that we need to come up all together. The traders down there can right. help. They have called me. They have told me, Muruki, can you revive this thing where engagement between business and government can be revived, where business can talk to government and mm -hmm. government can talk to business mm -hmm. without bus government talking down at people? That right. is simply what I'm saying. Right, Mr. Baruki. And uh, that collaborative engagement that you speak about, we want to believe is what um, was the brains also behind the formation of the Nairobi Regeneration Project that we see has brought this technical uh, group together to address all these various uh, sectors, all these various issues uh, that are affecting the country. And I want to engage you on that, Mr. M. Watok, that... We want to believe that this was formed genuinely to change the face of Nairobi from all these fronts, talking about uh, you know, rehabilitating the Nairobi eco River ecosystem, congestion, and public transport in the city. Do you think that this then offers the first step on the right path of really regenerating Nairobi? Exactly. P personally, on behalf of other members of the county assembly, we feel this is the best step that the president that has taken to, to supplement what the county government is unable to do. We must be very clear on this. When we talk about the, the Nairobi River, it's been a big challenge to the issue of environment in Nairobi. When we talk about regenerating Nairobi to a first-class city, it's a challenge to the current administration. And I believe the president, in his own wisdom, decided this is the best way to go. Other than engaging in, 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 in mouse and cart games, it's better to bring an alternative way to sort out some messes, which as the members of the county assembly, we are really fully full in support of it. Because eight months and nine days down the line, we've never seen that what was in the manifesto being implemented. Mm -hmm. You know, it surprises me when a full governor can say, judge me on my second year. By, by June next year, it's the second year of the, of, of, of the city. And the presidents in all over the world is you are judged by 100 days in your office. Now we've pushed back to one year in office. That's our president in leadership. Therefore, I support the, the regeneration program for Nairobi because it's the only way, I believe, it's the only way that can realize the potential of Nairobi and what the business community, what the investors want, the international community want to see. You remember in 2016, Nairobi was ranked as the best destination for tourism. It was ranked as the best destination for conferences. You remember the Pope came to Kenya. 
You remember the President Obama came to Kenya. Mm -hmm. You remember Vladimir Putin, Putin came to Kenya. All these prominent people came to Nairobi because Nairobi was having a face. Mm -hmm. The question is, where did the rain start beating us? The rain mm -hmm. started beating us at that level. The, 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 the administration is not ready to take advice like the men of history. Institutional memory is very important. Joe Akech is there. The chairman of CBD is there. They have history about this city. This city has, this city has history. When you talk about the CBD, ask Karaoke what happened at Kirinyaga Road mm -hmm. about these businessmen who do spare parts business. How do they pay their rates? How do we engage them? When you talk about the garbage collectors, the history of garbage collection, how has it been? How was it mitigated before that? Look at this, on 8th of August, before election, there are promises. Even me, I promise my ward people, when you re-elect me to the office, this is what I have to do. I've never blamed my former councillor and saying, no, I'm, I've not achieved to build a road in Jiwa Road because my former councillor didn't build a road. I've not uh, collected garbage in Makongen Estate because mm -hmm. that my former councillor did not collect the garbage. Right. The issue is I must bring alternative to what I promised the citizen of Nairobi. Right. So, citizen of Nairobi, I want to be very clear. Okay. As oversight role, we will play our part to make sure the, the current government performs to the standards they promised the Nairobians. And that's our key. And we have no negotiation about that. Right. And because we're almost short on time, uh, Mr. Akech, I want uh, your final and brief comments on the way forward. And to what extent do you believe that leadership and good leadership is essential in restoring that face that everyone wants to see of the city in a very brief uh, moment? Because we see this is mostly what Kenyans are bringing to the fore, a question of confidence and leadership. <clears throat> Mine is very, very, very brief, and I'm going back into um, trying to have Nairobi to go back to where it was. Nairobi was this green city in the sun, and of course, those mayors who are there, our fathers, did a good job. And I still believe that Nairobi is going to change. I was talking to the governor the other day, and uh, he is for the idea that uh, he might be able to have an advisory team that can also sit down with him and um, work together as a team. We need every person in this city because Nairobi, we, need, uh, we, 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 we have a lot of conferences which are coming here. We have the United Nations which is here. Uh, it's a tourist attraction which is, is one of the best in the, um, in the world because Nairobi, uh, you can never get any Mr. city. feedback. Excuse me. You cannot get any city uh, which has uh, uh, um, people going to the park. As, as, as it is in Nairobi. But my main concern here is, let's stop the, play, uh, the, 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 the blame game. The, the governor himself is trying the much that he can. He cannot do it on his own. He need his MCS, he need his ministers, he need these chief officers to work together because what I'm seeing here, or what I've been seeing lately, is a lot of sabotage because we are actually focusing on the garbage as opposed to some of the good things that this gentleman has done. Let us not really show that picture, just like the chairman of the NCBD has said, that if the tourist comes, he only sees the bad picture of, of Nairobi. Nairobi has got the good pictures. He has done, performance has been very, has been very good. And we want to thank the president for really uh, giving Sonko or the county of Nairobi the support by bringing in the team to try and work together with him. The fact that the team is coming does not mean that Nairobi has failed or the governor has failed. It's a question of working together, partnership, and that's what we want to encourage. Right. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, work together as a team. And I believe with what uh, the, the, the governor has said, of some of the hawkers and some of the border border guys and some of the people now going to go to, uh, to, 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 um, uh, to uh, what do you call it, to, going to Rwanda, I mean, it's, it's something that is going to save this city. Because those people, I've talked to them, and they said, Mr. Kate, when we come back, leave Nairobi to us. We right. are going to work together with the governor to make right. sure that we decongest the, the, the traffic, the, 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 um, the, 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 the bicycle, uh, the motorbike, Right. Definitely, they have got to be disciplined. It is going to be the responsibility. The orcas also, they are going okay. to organize themselves. So those are the kind of the things that we want to see happening. And it can only happen if people are working together as a team. We need Fantastic. everybody to come in and support this young man, right. support the governor. Definitely, okay. it's not easy, but I'm very optimistic that right. out of the seven pillars that he has, right. definitely Thank he's going to Thank do something you. Thank about you, sir, it. for those great insights. Unfortunately, we're really out of time, and this is a very important conversation that we could speak on and on about.
about. But I want to thank you, gentlemen, for your time and your insights on this all-important subject tonight. Uh, former Nairobi Mayor Joa Ketch, we have the Nairobi County Minority uh, Leader Peter uh, Mwatok and Mr. Timothy Murioki, who is the former chair for NCBDA. Thank you, gentlemen. And that's where we wrap up this edition of The Big Story. Thank you so much for your overwhelming feedback. Let's keep the conversation going on our social media platforms and engage on that on the way forward for Nairobi. My name is Sharon Momani. Do have yourself a pleasant evening, and I'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs>